Um, so that's exactly what we want to do today. We want to show you some uh, nutrition principles that's going to help you guys achieve high performance and help you reach your, your goals as athletes. <laughs> so these are the topics we're going to be covering today. Nutrition and performance. Um, what are energy dense foods? Um, general dietary guidelines which are important and by the way eating for exercise is a lot different than the general guidelines. Uh, nutrient timing so that's your eating around exercise time and supplement safety, portions, travel, and lastly and very importantly hydration. So good eating habits this is what you're going to get from eating proper foods for exercise and in general. It's going to enhance your athletic performance and health improve your focus during exercise, aid in faster recovery, you're not going to be as sore, um, you're going to uh, build lean body mass and muscle, it's going to help you lose body fat if you need to do that, and improve energy. So just the opposite, poor eating, hab poor eating habits will just perform your, uh, hinder your performance and health, prolong the recovery, you stay store sore longer, you decrease muscle mass, you increase fatigue, Decrease bone density, very important in females. Um, increase risk for injury and illness, of course, generally. So the energy foods, this is what we get energy from. Carbohydrates, fat, and protein. Now, carbohydrates, this is your glucose. You've all heard of glucose. And this is the most efficient and fastest way to get your energy. Your sport, it's a power sport. So this is what you mainly want to focus on getting carbohydrates. Fat, that is also an energy, um, an energy food and uh, it takes longer to digest. This is more for endurance sports. Uh, they rely more on the fat. So for your sport again, carbohydrates, low fat and moderate protein. Protein is slow and limited for energy so it's mainly used for muscle synthesis. So next um, yeah, muscle building and repair and excessive amounts of protein. This is a big misconception in the sports world. A lot of people think they're getting a lot of energy from protein powders. It's not the case. In fact, most Americans get too much protein. So you can use the protein powders and we'll talk about that a little later. Um, but you just want to be careful and not get too much because excess protein can lead to fat mass. So protein is never the body's preferred source of fuel. So the guidelines for peak performance are stay hydrated, <laughs> lots of complex carbohydrates, 55 to 60 percent, that's your bulk. We've got adequate protein at only 10 to 15 percent is fine, and low body fat, 10 to 25 percent is considered low body fat. You still need fat, so that's for a lot of different things, um, joint lubrication, nutrient digest, um, absorption, definitely need your fat. So increased dietary fiber in general, Dietary fiber is great for general health. However, you want to limit fiber around exercise. So right before and during, low fiber foods. And that's actually the glycemic index, which we'll discuss in a couple more slides. Uh, avoid excessive alcohol, especially if you're under 21. <laughs> <laughs> and lots of fruits and veggies. These are your antioxidants. So uh, nutrients like that, uh, definitely good for your um, immune health and recovery as well. People, sometimes people miss that point of getting lots of fruits and veggies. It is definitely important in sports. Uh, avoid junk food. They are performance robbers. Now, I just want to point out about that, though. Dietitians, we're not the food police. And so, you know, everybody cheats a little bit. And so I like to think of the 80-20 rule for myself. I like to eat clean and healthy about 80% 80, 80 of the time. But every now and then, of course, indulge. You want to enjoy your, your eating. And very important, stay rested. So the glycemic index, sounds a little complicated, but it's really not. This is all about the fiber in your food. So the high glycemic foods, these are the foods that have sugar like fruit, um, but they are low in fiber like white bread, white rice, things like that. These are great for right before or during exercise. So these will raise your blood glucose and insulin levels quickly, which makes energy available very quickly as well. So if you eat these around exercise, um, that's very good, but if you eat a diet high in high, gly high glycemic foods outside of exercise, that will lead to fat gain. So the low glycemic foods, this is for general health. You want to eat the whole foods, high fiber foods outside of exercise, like hours before or hours after. And so those are your whole grain bread, quinoa, vegetables, beans, things like that. Both are healthy. It's all about timing. 
So clean eating for high performance are generally, um, these are the nutrient dense foods, it's kind of hard to see up there. Nutrient dense foods for clean eating, you've all heard of nutrient dense foods and this is what it means. So it's generally minimally processed whole foods, uh, grains, whole pieces of fruit and veggies. They contain nutrients, vitamins and minerals, polyphenols, those are your antioxidants, those are the plant chemicals. Tons and tons of health benefits all over the place. Um, Anti-cancer, anti-aging, and they also help with recovery. Um, and fiber uh, are low in fat, sugar, and salt as opposed to the junk foods. Okay. Oh, yes, so they promote, <laughs> thank you. They promote weight management and weight loss if necessary. These are the whole foods. So this is a great visual. This is, has, has anybody heard of the USDA MyPlate? It's very popular. I love it, it's, I'm a big fan of it. However, I think this is better. This is what Harvard put out and it's a little more detailed. So we can see here, this is a good visual. You know how there's a recommendation of getting five to six servings of fruit and vegetables and a lot of people think that's crazy. It's actually not that hard. So this is a great visual of how your plate should look. Just strive for it. You know, we're not gonna get this every time. But notice how half the plate is vegetables and fruits, and a good portion of that's vegetables, smaller portion is fruits. On the other side, you've got a good amount of healthy protein and whole grains also. Very good visual. You've got healthy fats and you've got water. If you can handle milk, go for that too. So these are the performance robbers are generally heavily processed. They contain high amounts of sugar, fat and salt, preservatives, chemical fillers. Uh, little, to no, uh, little to no nutritional value, they're low in vitamins, minerals, and fiber, phytochemicals. So these are the foods that taste really good, but still, this is your 20%, <laughs> or, or less even, if you want. Soda, candy, you know, cookies, pies, ice cream, we all enjoy a little, little bit of that, and that's fine, but, you know, keep it low. So these will raise your insulin levels sharply and promote weight gain and increase blood pressure. Definitely in moderation. Okay, so this is nutrient timing. So this is, this is nutrients around exercise. Um, this is how you get the most benefit out of your performance and your food. So best performance results are seen with a balance of nutrients and timing is everything. Proper fueling before, during, and after is the key. So nutrition before exercise. So you wanna to strive to increase glycogen stores. And what that is, when you eat carbohydrates, um, it turns into glucose and that's energy. Basically, it's sugar. So if that goes into your blood, that's available for energy right away. Um, and also, it goes into storage in your muscle. And when you're exercising, you recall all of that. You use it from the blood first, and then you use it from the, from the muscle. So a couple hours before, you're getting a nice meal in. Still kind of medium fiber. So you've got um, approximately, this is an example, about three and a half ounces of lean meat, two cups of pasta, one slice of bread, two cups of water. And so this is gonna maximize your energy, stamina, um, build up those glycogen stores three to four hours before. After the meal, and this is general, we're gonna get a little bit more detailed with it. After the meal, you can sip moderately on sports drinks uh, up until it's time to exercise uh, and or water. And a small snack before is okay also, but sometimes trial and error is necessary. So you wanna do that outside of, of competition. Um, for me, I lift weights a lot, but I don't exercise on the level that you guys do. I can handle a little bit of banana during my uh, exercise. You might be able to as well, but you have to experiment to see. Again, don't ever do it around competition time. Always, when you're getting close to competition, do what works and what you know works. Mm -hmm. So before exercise, this is how much time is needed for digestion in general, but again, it is trial and error. So less than one hour for a snack, one to two hours for blended drinks, like a carbohydrate protein is great before. Um, that can also aid with the low blood sugar during exercise, hypoglycemia. And by the way, if you do experience that and you're well fed like this, so oftentimes you can push through it. If you're not well fed and you experience hypoglycemia during exercise, you might have to stop and, and fuel yourself. Uh, so for uh, two to three hours for a smaller meal and three to four hours for a larger meal. So during exercise, uh, it is good to consume, especially when you are um, going high intensity, consume sports drinks like Gatorade, Powerade. Again, do which one works for you, because I've had people um, who are used to Gatorade and on race day, they've drink 
Powerade and, and, and threw up. And when they were fine with Gatorade. I'm not saying one's better, but it's, everybody's different. So uh, approximately a quarter cup every 15 minutes. Uh, stick to the brand that you're used to, especially during competition. This will delay fatigue and maintain performance. <coughs> and uh, maintaining that blood glucose level, it increases energy and it helps with your focus. When you get the low blood sugar, that's when you start to get all shaky and confused and it really will rob your performance. So after exercise, immediately after, after exercise is what's called in nutrient timing world the anabolic stage and that is muscle building. So during that time, actually during exercise, your body is going through stages and directly after exercise is that's when hormones are uh, secreting and that allows your body to sort of suck up nutrients. Your muscles are taking in that, that, that <laughs> glucose. So the anabolic stage this is muscle building and your muscles will not build unless they are fed again. So this is what we're doing. We're ingesting high glycemic foods low in fiber, a combo of high carb and moderate protein. I, for myself, I like to blend up a scoop of protein powder and fruit, a uh, little bit of low-fat milk and water, but even easier, uh, chocolate milk. Low-fat chocolate milk is really good for that, directly after exercise. It replenishes energy stores in the muscle, stimulates muscle growth, maintains immunity health, and uh, continue with normal eating after that. It's okay. Um, within about two hours after is when you continue with your um, general guidelines of high-fiber foods. So. Energy, uh, meal distribution for optimal energy, never skip breakfast. This is very important. Your metabolism works best when fueled in the morning. It also stays, uh, it keeps your metabolism working faster so that you burn more calories and you don't have to worry about the excessive weight gain. So actually, it sounds kind of ironic, but eating more frequently is better to control your weight. It's just that um, the key is smaller, healthy meals. Eat smaller, but more frequently, three to four hours. Um, the, met the metabolism will actually slow down when starved, um, and then it's kind of hard to reset that. Large infrequent meals produce excessive insulin, and that can equal fat storage. Um, athletes burn a lot of calories, therefore it's best to stay active and eat frequently. Okay, strategies to promote fat loss while preserving lean tissue, and, ev and, and this is evidence-based. So this is um, a review I found in the scientific literature. This reviewed uh, a lot of other studies and came up with these conclusions that uh, when athletes were tested um, for meal frequency, uh, increased meal frequency caused supp um, suppression of lean body mass losses and significant increase in lean body mass while significant increase of fat loss. And so here is uh, meal distribution. Here's an idea of how you want to eat, a better idea. So you wake up in the morning, say if you're going to work out in the morning, you wake up, you have a small snack, carb-based granola bar. And you know, keep in mind those times that are required for digestion. Immediately after your weightlifting or your exercising, that's when you do your carb and protein combination. Shake. It's, it's OK to eat a turkey sandwich also, but I just I find a shake more appealing. Um, so for breakfast, you do a carb base with added proteins, such as an egg, sandwich, yogurt, piece of fruit. And then later on, after breakfast, you a snack from the backpack. You see how it's frequent eating. And then afternoon, you've got your lunch. You've got another snack. And then Gatorade during practice, sipping it. And then immediately after practice, eight ounce chocolate milk, dinner, and then another snack at bedtime. And after this, we have um, handouts that, are given to, that give great meal ideas and snack ideas. So for um, supplements, generally, athletes do not need supplements. If you're, if you're well fed, you're fine. Um, there are a lot of studies which show that some things can be beneficial, and that's a whole other lecture. <laughs> so I wanted to keep it very general that our government doesn't really regulate this too closely. So you can get safe supplements. But you need to look for these seals. Informed Choice, USP, CL, and NSF. Hydration is really very important, um, equally important to what food you're eating throughout the day. Um, the easiest way is to start each day with some water, right? Because you don't want to wait until you get thirsty because it, you lose about a quarter of your body's liquid before your thirst sensors actually kick in. So think about that. That's a lot, right? Come on, work with me. I know it's Saturday morning. I know it's rainy. Come on. Alrighty, so drinking water, as soon as you get up, two cups, super fast, 
however, I mean, warm, cold, that doesn't matter so long as you drink it, okay? And then throughout the day, just try and get about a cup of water every hour. That's a really easy way to manage it and to kind of plan your day if you're out at school or you're running around or at the gym. Um, before exercise, we kind of talked about this, two cups of liquids two hours before your practice. So right around the time that you're having your snack, you should also be having two cups of water with that, okay? Easy? Yes. All right, so then for those two hours between your meal and your actual practice, you wanna sip on either a sports drink or a little bit of water every 15 minutes. That same goal of about one cup per hour is what you're gonna aim for, which is really nice. It's an easy formula, you don't have to worry about the differences. Alrighty. So then while you're exercising, again, we talked about providing your body with some carbohydrates and some electrolytes to keep fueling your, uh, your exercise and replenish anything that was lost. So again, we're at the two big sips every 15 minutes, about a cup an hour. Um, after exercise, with that snack, like that chocolate milk we talked about immediately after, you wanna hydrate again, another couple cups because that one cup every hour during exercise probably isn't enough to replenish what you've lost, but it kind of is a Band-Aid, right? Moms and dads get what I'm talking about. Just, it'll cover your minimums and it'll keep you going so that you don't crash afterwards. Um, again, there's our formula, except here. You wanna keep that, that um, quarter cup or two big sips every 15 minutes of a sports drink for three hours after exercise, right up until the time you're gonna eat your next meal. Okay, good, all right. So. I know you guys have probably seen these portion sizes in plenty of places, and I'm also aware how dated some of these images are. I mean, I've got a cassette tape up here. Work with me, though. Um, if you can't really see them, we've got a baseball here, which is about a cup. That's a really good size for pastas, for rice, your grains, stuff like that. Um, half a cup, a light bulb, any other. Um, that's a good reference for fruit that's cut up or, or not like a whole apple. Uh, one ounce or two tablespoons is a golf ball. That's a peanut butter, si peanut butter serving. Uh, a tablespoon is a poker chip. Yet yeah, that lovely cassette tape is supposed to be a piece of bread. Mind you, I've never seen a piece of bread that size, but we'll go with it. Uh, right down here, three ounces for a checkbook. How about an iPhone, right? An iPhone is a perfect measure for a protein size. Piece of fish, chicken, steak, anything. We all have phones laying around or an iPod. Use that as your reference as you're running through and getting dinner. Um, a muffin or a biscuit is about the size of a hockey puck. Um, and cheese would be three die, would be an appropriate serving size. Alrighty, so I know you guys travel a lot, whether you're going to meets or performances, and the most important resource you have, um, aside from sleeping up there, um, is having a plan. Okay, you need to know ahead of time what you have available to you. <laughs> Hi there. Hi, we're talking about traveling. Cool. How about we'll talk about travel from bed here? Yeah? All right. So, if you're going to a meet, if you're going, even if you're out of the house all day for practice between school and all that stuff, you need to have a plan. You need to know what your resources are, what you have um, that's, a that's able to travel with you in a lunch bag, what's gonna be provided at the hotel if you're going long distance, stops you can make on the road, thing that'll, things that'll go on the plane. I know someone was over overseas recently for, for World, I heard. Um, so you need to know what kinds of things you can bring with you on the airplane that'll get through security, but will still fuel you. Thinking ahead is really gonna be your benefit here. Um, so we covered that and having a plan. Uh, bring your snacks. Little packets of oatmeal are the easiest thing. You've got a plastic Tupperware container that will go through. Um, it, you can't ruin that, you can't mess that up, right? And all you need is hot water or microwave. Easy, you get your carbohydrates in, you get a little bit of energy, and you can move on with the rest of your day. Um, Another really important thing for competition is try to maintain your home diet as much as possible. That's gonna avoid any um, GI distress, any fluctuations in your performance, right? Because if you're competing, you really wanna keep a, a level of 
what you've been working on and, and be able to improve. Um, so here we go, issues during travel, sleep, along with eating and GI distress, as we talked about. What else we got? All right, so nutrition can impact your performance, it can impact your mood, and it can also impact, there's one more, Darren, work with me. Energy, sorry, I couldn't remember the third one. Thank you. All right, so proper timing of nutrition and hydration will allow for improved performance and stamina, right? We've all tried to do a workout when we haven't eaten or we've eaten too much, and generally it doesn't go well, right? You just pray that it was a normal practice day and not an actual meet. Um, so maintaining adequate nutrients and hydration throughout exercise, as we've talked about, gives you enough energy and fuel to perform the tasks that you need to. Um, and well-fed people are so much happier than people who are hungry, right? Have you heard the expression hangry? Yeah. My husband gets hangry and we try to avoid that as much as possible because it's not fun for anyone else involved. Alrighty. So. Stay with me just a couple minutes longer. I'm gonna do a wrap up for you real quick. We'll go over a handout and then we can do questions and fun story time. All right, so be picky about what you put in your body, right? You're picky about plenty of other things, what clothes you'll wear. Choose your foods wisely. Make smart choices and eat a variety. Um, small frequent meals that pull from each of the food groups and you supplement sparingly if at all, be sure they're safely produced. I think I have a couple more up there. Stay hydrated and well rested and always have a plan. Alrighty. Questions, comments, concerns? Just like chocolate milk or something after workout rather than like a supplement. Chocolate milk after workout is, sorry that light is in my eyes, um, is the easiest thing to do. Plenty of them are, um, they're processed in a way that they're shelf stable. So you can throw it in your gym bag, it won't go bad, it'll be fine. You're getting a little bit of hydration. It's a combination of carbohydrates from the, the sugars in the chocolate and the milk and also the protein in the milk. So it's one nice little package, comes with its own straw, easy. It tastes good. That too. Chocolate milk is always yummy. That was for you guys too. Yes. Go for it. Cereals yeah. In the morning. Cereals in the morning is really a personal preference thing. It needs to follow the timing. For me, I was a figure skater for 15 years, so I couldn't eat more than like a banana or a piece of toast before. My body just couldn't handle it. If your child can, fine, go for it. Give them the two to three hours before. Um, and make sure they have a little piece of fruit with it, just so it's all, each meal is balanced. Um, if they just want some dry cereal, that's fine too. Still gives them a little bit of carbohydrate to push them through and get them out of bed. That's a really important thing to touch on, I think, is a lot of this is what you can handle and what you can incorporate into your life. If your kid doesn't like chocolate milk, okay, give them half a turkey sandwich, right? That's something else, put it in a bag with a little, um, ice pack, mm -hmm. and it still has a little bit of vegetable, you put a slice of cheese in there, you get some extra protein and some dairy, and you're done. So. Another thing I want to touch on with the with the cereal is the fiber content too. Oh yes. So be mindful of that in, in, in regards to like around the exercise. Yeah. If it's right before, you don't want to have a real high fiber cereal, although high fiber cereals are very healthy. Yeah, like a special you know. K would be much better than like right. an all brand. <laughs> it may not go well. <laughs> for you know, having two or three hours before practice yes. is, is like mythical. I don't think it's ever gonna happen. So when we're eating mm -hmm. in the car uh -huh. on the way to practice, mm -hmm. we're gonna be stuck mm -hmm. in practice for the next four hours. Yep. How do we get, what goes? Does, does the high carb go? Where do we give in on that? Um, so can you tell me what your child would normally eat in, in on, on that car ride? Sandwich. Something probably. Okay, well, because then I can provide, yeah. you know, um, so a, another half turkey sandwich would be good if, how, how long is your commute? 20 minutes. Okay. Going straight from school, straight to here, and that's the time frame that we have. We don't have that okay. luxury of having two hours to eat. Okay. I, w I would also be mindful of the fiber. So, yeah, turkey sandwich. It, it, it's like I said, it's different from general guidelines where mm -hmm. they promote, we promote a lot of high fiber foods in general. Right before exercise though, that close to exercise, that's when you want your white bread. Mm -hmm. Your white carbohydrates, white rice, things like that. But a turkey sandwich would still be a good choice. Just yeah. don't go for 100% whole fiber, whole grain bread at that point. It'll just avoid an upset belly. And then like Courtney said, fruit. 
fruit also, really good. Right? Fruit and a piece of cheese. Th those are things you can throw in a lunchbox or, and Straight travel cheese, well. Good yes. yes. Yeah, low fat, high protein, low fat. That's an excellent choice. Yeah. On the same line, yeah. practice runs late. They don't get home until nine o'clock. How do we provide a meal at midnight, three hours after practice? Right, so mm -hmm. you've got it. This is what we were saying is you really have to kind of tailor it and, yes. and make it work for you. So he, this is your son, mm -hmm. okay. He needs a big bang for his buck kind yeah. of meal, right? Yeah. He needs some really high quality protein, whether it's scrambled eggs that late at night that, that work or some good um, like grilled chicken, mm -hmm. keep a rotisserie chicken in the fridge, something like that some vegetables and a ton of carbohydrates. I would almost do one and a half servings of like a brown rice or, or a baked potato, something like that, so that he's going to bed and he's not gonna wake up for the next workout and be starved. That'll get him through the night, give him enough nutrients to recover, and he should be. Definitely, and that's when leftovers are a great plan. Yeah, you know, do things that you, yes. you can just, maybe if you can, you know, if other people in your family, I'm not sure, can yeah, well, we don't cook ahead. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Right, exactly. So, you know, you're cooking your meals for earlier in yeah. the day, and then just heat, heat up a plate for Leave him. Leave some extras, yeah. Okay. And it's, it's not going to be three hours. No. It's going to be one and a half. And that's fine, because if he's not sleeping, Right. The, then that doesn't matter, right. right? So get him his nutrients yeah. with enough time between yeah. that he actually has an appetite. Because I know sometimes right after a hard workout, you just aren't hungry. Yeah. So make it so you've got an appetite. Sorry, I'm talking to you like you're not right there. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's yeah. taking the notes. Um, so work with it, play with it, but you have to have the nutrients. Yeah. I, I, would er, I would go for the complete meal versus just a packet of oatmeal when you get home yeah. because that's just not gonna be sufficient for, for a long workout. But I also, you know, oh, go ahead. We eat fast food every day. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Bagel I have breakfast and then I go to school <laughs> and then I go to gym and uh -huh. then I go home and sleep. So. Okay. <laughs> What's a good place to eat? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, what should I be eating? Grocery store. I can take it. <laughs> Go for it. What's better, McDonald's or right. Burger King? <laughs> <laughs> How about do you like Chinese food? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to recommend, well, I have other ideas, but for anybody who likes Chinese food, I recommend Panda Express. Because oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can, now for instance, not, not, and now not we're everything there. Now, here's how you can go there and really do well. You can go and get their brown fried rice, which they have now. You can get steamed vegetables as the other side. And then your, your two entrees that you get, you can do um, your teriyaki chicken with no sauce. That's lean protein right there. I know, but that's so and boring. Beef and broccoli. <laughs> no sauce. You, you lost half the crowd. Try it. I recommend you try it because it's marinated. It's really good. Yes. So, back to this question. What about Chipotle? There you go. Chipotle? Anybody? Chipotle. Do you like Chipotle? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's a very good, <laughs> very good option. <laughs> 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 I'd, I'd go to Chipotle, but I would go to Chipotle. I was just yeah. Say, I think one of the important things with Chipotle and Panda Express though is the proportion size. Yes. So if you are choosing those for your healthier choices of fast food, really two meals. Absolutely. It is. That's a very good point. Yes. I always cut them in half myself. Um, so Gatorade's all right. Gatorade is all right if it's. My cook is like no Gatorade. So there's been a lot of mixed reviews on it. The, the time when Gatorade's not okay is if you're waking up and you're not eating and you're drinking a Gatorade, or you aren't being physically active at all and each day, which applies to no one in this room, and that's what you're drinking instead of water. Gatorade, if you're... Ooh, alrighty. You, <laughs> so you guys have practices that range a span of hours, correct? Okay. So you are going through your, your water content and your electrolytes so quickly that you need to replenish it. Gatorade was built for people like you guys. Gatorade was not built for the people in your class that their exercise is gym class. Cool? I think also a key there is to sip it. Yeah. If you're, if you're chugging Gatorade while you're working out, that can upset your stomach. Okay. So yeah. sipping every 15 minutes. Exactly, that quarter cup every 15 minutes.
How Good. soon should you eat after workout, uh, snack-wise? You know what I'm so e hour, right, Im immediately get your chocolate milk or something that's balanced quickly, and then within an hour you need to eat a little something more substantial. Right. Yes, dear. Um, a lot of us take protein after practice. Yeah. It's like one to two servings, like scoop suggested size. What's the like more beneficial? That's all you, Darren. I don't yeah, take that's, protein. That, that would be more of a one scoop thing. You're gonna get a lot more protein, uh, most likely, throughout the rest of your day, and that would be excessive. So if you're doing two scoops, yeah, that's too much. I've heard that the whey protein is the way to go yeah. when, um, if you're taking a protein supplement. Is that the case? Yeah. Whey is one of the best proteins. Okay. Absolutely, yeah. It's it, it's your body can utilize whey protein the best. Um, it, it's the best for uh, muscle synthesis and um, repair, okay. definitely. You're gonna so absorb like it well too. That after workout, cool it's very cool. Yeah. I will say though that there's whey protein in the chocolate milk. Yes, whey comes from dairy. Right, so, so if you're eating your chocolate milk, you're still getting that same quality of and protein. It's natural too. Definitely. Yeah, right in the back there. Protein shakes versus protein bars. Definitely lean towards shakes. I would lean towards shakes because they, most of the time in your, in your protein bars, you're getting a lot of other things. You're getting preservatives and chemicals and things mm -hmm. like that. And they're slower digested as well than a liquid. There's a better way to have no, some I can. energy before practice rather than like crushing a Red Bull. There you go. <laughs> 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 I'm Alrighty. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> You're breaking my heart right now. Just absolutely breaking my heart. Okay, so if you follow these guidelines that we've given you to stay hydrated, to get a reasonable amount of sleep every night and to balance out your nutrients throughout the day, you won't have that crash problem. You're having that crash problem because you're not giving yourself enough fat, carbohydrates, and protein throughout the day. And your body is just exhausted and physically cannot. Speaking of, what did you eat this morning? What did I eat? No, no, right behind you. Oh, we were up at five o'clock. That's why. Okay, I'm, I've been up since 4.30. <laughs> With the whole energy drink situation, there might be an adjustment period too. You know, if that's what you're accustomed to and you're not getting the proper mm -hmm. nutrients first, then you might have to go off it for a day or two before you start to feel better because uh, your body's used to all that caffeine. But it is the better way to go, definitely, is nutrients above that. <laughs> all I'm saying is, and they can speak to this a little bit farther, but you know, they are drugs, okay? Caffeine is a drug. You can get addicted to the caffeine, whether you do it in coffee, and I'm sure you have friends or parents that are addicted to coffee. I don't. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. And, and you get to get addicted to Red Bull. Well, yeah. those are highly concentrated too. It's like a few cups of coffee. I have a question in the back and then we'll grab you. All right, so your question was about the five hour energies. Aren't they just B vitamins? Um, do they actually have caffeine components in them or is it straight Bs? Okay, so it's, it's caffeine plus B vitamins. B vitamins are one of the easiest ones to get from your diet if you're eating a balanced diet. They, there's not a lot of it at Taco Bell, let me just warn you. Um, but the B vitamins are ones that are processed through with the liquids that you would um, absorb. So if you're drinking those five hour energies, you're basically producing really expensive pee, right? You're not getting a, a lot of it. You don't need more than what you're consuming through your normal diet. Same with um, the high doses of vitamin C packets. Yeah. Your body can only absorb so much. Right. So you know, don't don't be fooled by these claims that oh, this high dose is going to give you benefit. Right. Especially with water soluble vitamins B and C. Yeah, you pee them right out. So it's better to sustain it throughout the day. Yeah. Get the most benefit. Um, iced tea. I know it has some caffeine, but isn't it more of a diuretic, and how does it can affect all the liquids and everything that they're supposed to keep in the body? I can take that unless yeah. you want to. Okay, so, so your body has, um, has the kidneys, right, which will help serve as um, a regulator or a moderator. Day to day, the foods that are called diuretics, so like a cup of coffee or tea, they don't really affect your body that way. Your body will just absorb more water later throughout the day to compensate. Um, 
tea is a better option than coffee, especially for this population because there's less caffeine in it um, and you know it's a, it's a high water content. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a misleading. Yes, it does change how your body um, excretes waste and water, but it makes up for it on the, on the other side.